Hi. <laughs> Welcome to Agile World Better English. <laughs> Agile World was created by Sabrina Bruce and Carl Smith to focus on agility within a global community. Steve and I are the newest addition. Maybe not anymore. We keep adding new languages, but Steve and I are the newest, one of the newer additions to the Agile World family. I'm Cynthia Kahn, founder of GSD Mindset, an Agile consultancy. And my co-host, Steve, he and I are both passionate about Agile. Through this podcast, we share experiences of how others apply Agile principles to become successful. So you too can apply those principles and be successful. Steve, why don't you introduce yourself and our esteemed guests? <clears throat> Hey, uh, thank you, Cynthia. I am Steve Mowbray, and welcome to Agile World. And uh, geez, this was just like a couple of days ago, it seems like, or, or, or a week ago, I was so thrilled to see uh, Colleen Esposito post something about women in Agile Open, and there was April's name, April Jefferson, and there was Linda Cook's name, and Brielle Maxwell, and I just got so excited because I have been looking for an opportunity to hang out with all five of you, but but April and Colleen, I've been looking for an opportunity to collaborate with you guys in some way or another, and and I'm just thrilled by this whole thing. So um, I'm just going to I'm just going to turn it over to you guys. And so tell me about Women in Agile Open and 2021. When's the date? What is this thing? What led you guys to do that? Because you guys are awesome. Well, I'm happy to share it with you. Like how Women in Agile Open was born. And it is Women in Agile Open 2021. Our third event is this October 8th and 9th. Women in Agile Open was born when we were at, I was at another Women in Agile conference and looking at how are we going to make a difference personally, as well as looking at, oh, man, I just want more. I want to go deeper in and we haven't had the chance that we needed our own thing, that we needed our own conference, not just a little segment. And I knew that open space was something for me personally, which that's where I first met Colleen at was in open space, that it really unlocked my own potential. And I wanted to gift that to others, other women in this space and I invited Linda to do it with me and she was crazy enough to say yes. So <laughs> you want to add more. For those who don't know what, not everyone is a, an Agilist who listens, but they want to be more Agile and they want to learn about it. So please explain what's an open space and how can you get more out of that versus a planned conference? Oh. Grab that one. Um, an open space is an unconference. It is not like a traditional conference where everything is all planned out. There's there's a essentially a frame, some roles, a few rules, one law, and that guides everything that happens. The participants show up not knowing what the agenda is going to be, other than that framework, and they bring the offerings to that particular space. Colleen, you said one law. What, what's, what's the one law? The law of mobility, which is also called the law of two feet, which basically means, hey, if you ain't getting anything out of the session you're in, wherever you are, whether it's in the hallway or sitting with somebody, you don't have to stay. You don't have to feel obligated or embarrassed because, gosh, you know what? I studied this and it was my PhD was in this and I thought <laughs> we're going to talk about something else. And I'm just not getting anything from it. You could actually take your little feet and go to some place where you can contribute. Okay, so you, you take your little feet or big want. old feet. So, so basically people show up and then you start putting together the agenda as people are there, right? And anybody who wants to share a topic, you share a topic and then everybody picks a time frame, and you might have two, three, 10 different topics at any given moment. Right. And you create the schedule and people can go jump on those. Right. That's absolutely true. Oh, that's awesome. So, so Linda, you met April and Brielle and Colleen. How did you guys meet? Oh gosh. We, 
I met them all differently. Um, April, I met uh, at a client that we shared in Buffalo, New York, and uh, we just had the best time working together. April is an amazing collaborator, and she kept talking to me about, we have to figure out something we can collaborate on, something that we are passionate about. And we had both been to the uh, Women in Agile event that she uh, mentioned earlier, and I guess that was one of the thoughts that she had. And uh, April, in the great energy way that she brings to everything she does, uh, said, okay, well, let's do this and let's do it this year. Okay, and we're going to do it in October. And the next thing you know, she's introduced me to Brielle, another wonderful collaborator. Uh, Colleen and I have crossed paths many times. I don't actually remember where we met. Colleen, do you? South Florida, maybe through another mutual friend, I think. We may have been in an yes, event. Probably. I, you know what? It's been a long time. Everybody it knows Colleen. might have been at a another Agile event down in uh, Fort Lauderdale, now that you say that. Are you yep, both Floridians? Where it was. Floridian. So nope. but it's been my good fortune to meet lots of fabulous people in the Agile community. They're among some of my favorite groups. And... Uh, so April being the convincing personality that she is, <laughs> talked to me and said, well, this is what we could do with our evenings while we're in Buffalo, New York, because Lord knows there wasn't much else to do. <laughs> so we spent a lot of evenings getting together, putting together these ideas based on an open space, unconference. She enlisted Brielle, and we got Colleen on board, who is an amazing uh, organizer herself. And the next thing you know, the first event was born. And uh, we worked with uh, some other organizations to help us pull this thing off. And um, it's been, you know, running since then. As April said, it's going to have their third year this year. I'm sure it's going to be another fantastic event. And I look forward to uh, hearing some of the outcomes of what comes of the gathering again this October. Oh, that is that is wonderful. And I have been at conferences with April and I tried to tell her no, and it's not possible. You just can't. <laughs> Your enthusiasm is just so infectious. So Brielle, when when you know April came to you or Linda came to you and, and talked to you about this, what 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 happened? What what was going on in your in your mind, your thoughts? Well, I definitely thought that it was a good collaboration. I enjoy it anytime. And I echo that April's a great person to um, just get ideas building. You know, we use the principles of like pairing and building off of each other's work and, um, you know, just like yes and each other and improving each other. So all those things like generally leave you with a good um, energy and a good path forward. So I think, um, I started to just apply my um, design skills for the first year and I was uh, pretty much like doing the graphics and building the website. So like more in that, in that area was where my, I contributed my expertise, but I think just learning about um, open space, like I've always like held the concept as like, oh wow, this seems like it's really um, impactful and interesting, but for me, um, I had to see that value come to life through our, our event was the first open space that I've ever been to. So I was just like kind of continuing to hear, hear all these, um, this big lead up, but it didn't disappoint because I think people did, um, you know, seeing that formation, like there's an opening circle and it really is like the invitation and people respond and people came in and the women, um, got what they needed out of it and they created together. And I, I think that was, yeah, it definitely uh, lived up to the expectations. Can you, guys... you said opening oh. circle. Tell me about the opening circle there. What... Yeah, so the opening circle, uh, April led the opening circle. So she has a specific, like, I guess it's even like a style of facilitation that um, opening circles uh, rely on because it's kind of just like, you know, inviting really empathetic, really uh, tuning into the present moment, really um, engaging with people um, in the moment, I guess what I would say. So yeah, it's very, um, it's almost like, it's like a meditation, a group meditation, I would call it. <laughs> what do you think, April? 
Wow. Uh, some people have said that it was it's just what they need because of the pace on how I facilitate uh, an opening for open space. And one of the elements of open space is breath. And that was a part of everything. When we look at, people talk about holding space often, and we know that holding space is not equal to facilitation. What us four ladies did the entire time, we were holding space for them in preparation uh, for the event. It was in care of, and it was a space of great breath. You know, um, as like Linda and I were like talking and thinking about every moment, or the Colleen and Brielle, every moment we were looking at how can we be in care of in, in that opening circle, we just invited a space to, to slow down, to be fully present for whatever else is going on in your life. Because as they say, as ladies, when we say we're going to bed, that means we're doing like 30 tasks before we actually get into bed. <laughs> and so we gave them a space of, of breath and, and invited them to truly connect with why we were gathering. That's beautiful. Cynthia, you, you had a, a question? Yeah, I, I've been to open unconferences before and there's always something that happens that's kind of like we, Steve and I, and part of the Agile world is the aha moment, we call it. So to get people who've never been to one before excited about attending this one, maybe because Colleen and Linda are next, maybe you guys could share an aha moment. And, and then Brielle and April, if you've had one at, at a conference, like over the last couple of years, what, 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 what was that? What's it like to just be in the moment and like you have a paradigm shift or something. I'm waiting. Yeah, I wanna talk back to the first open space I went to, which was more than a couple of years ago, but it um, it's the one that's just springing to mind right now. And there were many things that I learned there. And the, one of the things that I learned was that I didn't need to discount someone else's idea in favor of mine but that you can take the idea and stack the idea on each other. Before April and I played Yes And, by the way, I think we both played it for the very first time with Jesse. Yes. Uh, from the Improv Effect, who's amazing, amazing. And we, we planned this party that was just like, it started at this little thing. And by, before you knew, I think we had like purple you know, unicorns or maybe pink ponies, something like that. And it was on the beach and we invited an entire city and we fed them all. And it was just the, the idea that you can take something that's so small and by not discounting someone's thoughts, someone's emotions, someone's ideas, you could come up with something that was be bigger and better than either one of you. That was my aha moment for the power of open space as well. Thought synergy to come up with something together that's better than you could come up with by yourself. That's beautiful too. Yes. <laughs> How about you, Linda? So I have a couple of thoughts uh, going through my mind about open space. One of those was a lesson I got from Llewellyn Falco about how to speak into a mic. I was going to be <laughs> the facilitator and open the event. And um, Llewellyn was kind enough to teach me how to properly use a large microphone. And it's just, I'm remembering that fondly in the whole experience, as I have many. Uh, the other thing that really has stuck out for me with open space as an approach is really starting with the law of two feet. And it's one of those things that I try to remind myself that I really am in control of where I'm going and that I can use my mind and my body to get there. And if I don't like where I am, it's kind of up to me to change where I am and move to that better place. Okay. And I just love Amen that. Amen to that, that baby. A, I know. <laughs> it's up to me. Um, You're getting a chorus of amens, that. Linda. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I know. I got it. I feel you all, believe me. And there's another part about open space that I, I tend to reflect on in my work. And that is the idea of being a, a bumblebee or a butterfly. 
that's one of the things we haven't talked about yet with open space. It is kind of a posture that you take. And uh, bumblebees actually just go around from group to group and they pollinate wherever they go and get ideas going and encourage conversation and whatnot. And then we have the butterflies, the beautiful butterflies who just flutter from space to space, listen in for a bit, perhaps take a little bit from it and then move on to the next space. I just love those concepts. Uh, if uh, you're involved in Agile at all, you know we like to talk about farm animals of all sorts. So adding butterflies and bumblebees just seems a natural addition for me. It's much more meaningful than any one open space. It's about being a part of a living experience with everyone and knowing that you have freedoms as well as a voice. I think it's really the most powerful part of an open space on conference. That is awesome. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Linda. So, uh, Brielle, now you do a lot, lot of graphics work. You have a design company uh, b business. So we're putting all of this together. So how is all of that coming into play? And, and, and what, what could people expect if they want to come to this conference? Yeah, I think, um, so, I mean, the way we design the experience now, um, we have a solid team of volunteers and we are kind of um, part of our mission is to like raise the voices and to um, help others kind of step up and learn through the process of putting together the conference. So we've been kind of like in that role this time, but I think um, part of what we're embracing is just um, two different circles that are coming together. There's what we call a spark circle and an ignite circle. And we've done a lot of thinking on how um, going global this year will help us um, kind of hear from voices from all over the world. Like I was really eager to go back to um, thinking about the, first, the success of a first event of going back in person, but April was, remembering the opportunity of going um, global through virtual. And um, it's something that she's been doing with other groups and seeing really a, res a great response. So I think um, that's kind of like the way we've designed the experience. And um, actually like we're even decentralizing like all the way that we're making graphics, we're all making graphics now, we're all kind of like uh, doing our part to, to share that, the the marketing efforts are all stories of the past years and um, testimonials. So we're really just like kind of, you know, this larger tribe now um, to make the, the work um, happen. Very cool. And how many volunteers? You mentioned volunteers. 28, I think. Oh my Plus. goodness. Yes. Yeah, something like that. Eight people are pulling, pulling this thing together. That's amazing. What's so oh, amazing oh. about it, if I could add, is that we've moved, we're in our third year and we moved from a space where we were doing everything to we're really having this community uh, do it. And we are more shepherding as founders. So you won't see me, Colleen, Rail, Linda, none of us are facilitating the open space. We're not uh, being in front of the put in the spotlight we've stepped back and so so this community can we co-own this together this is our conference as women in agile not uh not Brielle's or Colleen's or Linda of mine this is ours so that I, has been quite beautiful I saw some boys so is it not only for boys for <laughs> All genders I are saw welcome. Some boys, <laughs> I freaked out. Is it for boys and girls? <laughs> Colleen, can you speak about that in our first year and like our first guy, how he showed up? That's so awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So we actually had a couple men uh, signed up the first year, and and as it turned out, only one of them was able to attend. And but he just listened and learned and just engaged in the conversation. And genders didn't matter actually i would say we actually had all genders represented because there were there were some non-binary people 
as well. And and so that's the thing that's different about this particular unconference is how inclusive it is. And it's not like we we oh we accept people like that. No, we invite people like that. We want everyone to feel a part of. And just to echo, it's not our conference. It's our conference. It's not the volunteers conference. It's everyone who comes conference. It's the participants. Let me ask you this. How do unconferences for women in Agile or Agile people, how do you become more Agile or how do you change or transform to a beautiful butterfly after the conference? Like, what is it that people can expect? Like, how are they different from coming to a place like that? I'll share a little bit because I hear this often and because I I'm a little bit addicted to open space. It's <laughs> okay. And uh, think of mine. we <laughs> all have our issues. <laughs> <laughs> That's my addiction. I'm sorry. You know, I don't know if I want to be cured from it either. But <laughs> uh, nobody's planning an intervention. So but it's, okay. it's amazing to hear like post open space that how it has changed people's lives. I know it changed mine when people tell me that because of this, they changed their maybe their career. In open space, remember like our first one, we're there like intentionally unlock our potential together. And I know that's what open space did for me, that the people there gathered, they saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. And that's one of the things that happens in this generative space that um, we, we, we find our voice in a way that we have, a, we have that freedom and mobility to contribute in a different space and that new things emerge. You may come out an author or a speaker, you know, a, a different type of coach is that people have done some amazing things by walking out of the space. So I don't know. I got goosebumps. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I keep thinking about summing it up as instead of people talking at you, they're talking with you and they're communicating and listening to you. And so I can see, I've, I've been to them myself, but I, for those it, people who've never done it, it's so different because most people go and then they sit and they listen, they take a few notes or whatever, but this is like, there's no... If you want to be with it, then you can be with it and learn from it. And I think that's the power of yes. community, yeah. too. Yeah. And, and, and uh, this is something I've heard, and I think April actually is the one who said it to me. It's not, it's not about power over. It's about power to. Power to the participants. Power to all the people who are there. And I think you find your power, you recognize, you realize, even if you hadn't realized it before, that there is power within all of us. Every single one of us have a, has a power of their own. And it's a matter of unlocking that power. And um, sometimes we need help. <laughs> we can see it ourselves. We need somebody else to bring it out in us. And in tough years like the last year and a half, we need somebody to help us through it. Okay, so I'm give it an amen, sister. Yeah, that, that is <laughs> <I'm> like yes. <laughs> that is that is that is wonderful. So we have a conference coming up. You guys are putting together with a large group of volunteers. A lot of people are showing up. It's going to be global. How many people are you expecting, and how many topics are going to be? be covered and like every everybody can can bring a topic right so, so what, what's this going to be like so i'll answer this one because i've answered this to everyone since the first conference when uh people like we don't advertise who's showing up because it's open space whoever's coming are the right people and so whether it's three or 300 you are the right soul to show up and we're excited about you and the topics are endless there's no buffer on what what is offered you simply need someone to partner with you to have your topic 
uh, brought up. Right? Done very openly. Everyone really has an opportunity starting with capturing what are the ideas, what are the thoughts we want to talk about today into uh, how do we arrange that schedule. It's amazing the collaboration that happens around uh, joining ideas to combine topics to fit into time slots, uh, the trading back and forth like, oh my gosh, I want to go to this session, but I'm, I've already committed. I'm going to be the facilitator in this other session. And so before you ever even start talking about the topic, the collaboration and just thoughtfulness that goes into the setup is amazing in of itself. And if you've not experienced that in any other form, which chances are you haven't, uh, that alone, I think, sets the tone for the amount of uh, openness and willingness people have to speak truth to their, their uh, power. Thank you for that, Linda. So, so here is the thing. What are what are some of the topics that 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 might be covered? Like, Linda or, or April or or Brielle, what was what was one of the first topics you guys brought up at the first conference? For two, I'll go. Yeah, go. <laughs> um, building off of what Linda said, I think it's so interesting the way you see the sessions come together. But I was thinking of doing something around like finding your purpose or like finding your vision. Um, and then someone had a similar idea at the, at the um, first women in agile open. And so we paired and like, it was very uh, awesome to see like how to these two different mindsets were approaching. And like, she had a very like different approach than mine, but we were like working alongside um, and helping people kind of like, I started doing more of the graphics and like graphic recording on like her um, way of leading people to finding their vision and it all just worked out. So um, I think there's different ways, like even if there's a similar topic, don't be afraid to propose it. And if you want have your own way of um, like, going through and illustrating it, that's awesome. Even if it sounds duplicative, you can collaborate or you can choose to um, do your own session and see what, what happens. And even I have another year, um, I think only one person came, to, I was, I think it was something about like, um, like uh, working through um, the, I think it was like Black Lives Matter in the workplace or something like that. And like only one other person came, but we we're like, okay, well, let's, let's talk, it, talk through it. So it was, uh, it's always different. Um, Pauline, what's going on behind your screen? So I think is that you? Are you scaring me? <laughs> <laughs> I just had to bring that up. You're Colin, talking about Colin just posted the like, picture of herself as her background. So for those of you listening, listening and not seeing the video, that, that's what it is. So yes, so, so for those uh, really boring conferences, you've got something like this. And I think I'm gonna propose that as uh, <laughs> how can you get out of boring conferences and meetings? There you go. I love I love that. And with open space, you just go to the next one. So Brielle, I want to I want to make sure that everybody listening under understands when you did your first one and you found somebody to collaborate with, mm -hmm. you didn't plan that out weeks in advance, did you? You showed up at the conference. Right. During the open space, and the two of you may not have even met before, and all of a sudden, you're starting to collaborate on this, right? Right, right. It's all very in the moment. Mm -hmm. So that that is so cool. That is so cool. It, would anybody else like to like to share one of their experiences to, to help people understand what this is all about? Because we've done, because those of us here, we've done open space before, but how do we really express what open space can be? To, to those those listening and how powerful it is. We have one more chance before we probably have to start wrapping it up. So no yeah. pressure. Okay. No pressure. <laughs> I would say that it's really well, any topic. Find... It, it is uh, a technical conference, but I'll let Linda share. Go ahead. You both uh, have April, a couple minutes. Wanted... <laughs> you can do it. I just go wanted ahead, to sorry. invite people to show up and find out for yourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Open there you go. Open space unconference. Okay. You need to try it. Figure it out. There aren't a lot of rules, as Colleen said earlier. And um, what the heck, you just might get something out of it. 
There you go. I can't imagine that anybody could go to this and not get something out of it unless they walk in with a very closed mind. Yeah. What I would say, expect the unexpected, as we say, in open space. So whether you are decide to, you know, have a mob, a, a mob session, you know, hack something or to, you know, talk about empathy and psychological safety. Everything, every topic is really welcome. That's awesome. Yeah, and I can tell you that I've run conferences, like if I'm about to speak at a conference, sometimes I'll go to an open space and just run that as a session and see what kind of feedback I get. So somebody who might be presenting at a traditional conference could use an open space as well to test out their ideas. Awesome. Absolutely. Or anything that, that, it, that is in the back of your mind. So if people want to find out more about open space and women in Agile Open in particular, what do they do? Okay. Can, can you they- You can't put it, it in the chat. It's got to be like oh, on- There we go. Thing to, so where, you where know, would no, they go to find know. out about open space? And where would they go to fi- women in Agile Open? Is there a website? LinkedIn? Yes, we have a website. We are on LinkedIn. We're on Twitter. So we're Women Agile Open on Twitter. Okay. We are, you know, for LinkedIn, we're Women in Agile Open. Our website is Women in Agile Open. Oh, I don't think we have an Insta. Do we have an Insta, Real? I don't think we have no. IT. Um, and for Open Space, I'll think Open Space. You can find out about that. Open Space Institute. I'm a board member uh, as well. So it's fitting. Yeah. And people can contact you maybe directly if they just have a question. Any of you, like they could write down your names while they're watching the video or they could look you up on the website, our website, and get your names and then maybe reach out, message you on LinkedIn or something. So there's a lot of ways, right, to get you. The Agile Alliance also has an open space initiative. If you want some support, I'm actually a chair for that. And uh, <laughs> I'm actually important everywhere. Right? No, uh, and um, we do help you. Like, if you're trying to like discover how do I do this myself, if you want to like do it through your own open space, um, you can probably talk to anyone on this call, and they could help you out. Okay, so how would you feel if somebody reached out to you on LinkedIn? Would you bite their head off, or would you say hi? definitely say hi. <laughs> okay. One last, one last question. All right. Oh, Every, hang on. If April says hi, next thing she's going to ask is what can we collaborate on? So beware. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> so contact Linda. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Why not? <laughs> there, we, there we go. Colleen, are you, are you more of a butterfly or a, a bumblebee? Bumblebee. Linda. Oh, Bumblebee for sure. April? Whew. So, <laughs> I am more of a butterfly. Okay. Two Bumblebees, one Butterfly, Brielle. Butterfly. Butterfly. There we go. <laughs> what a great combination. We've got butterflies. We've got, we've got Bumblebees. And some of the most amazing people I've ever met. So I, I'm honored to do this and I'm lucky enough to, to meet you all. So uh, we are getting close to time, Cynthia. Well, if you wanna find us, <laughs> we're everywhere on social media. We are on LinkedIn, Facebook. We got an Instagram. <laughs> we're on Twitter <laughs> and Tumblr if you still use that. Uh, The video version of this podcast is available on YouTube, as well as our website, agile-world.news. Our podcasts are posted everywhere you want to be. They're on Spotify, Apple, Google, Pocket Casts, Anchor, Breaker, and Public Radio. And if you have any ideas for topics or somebody that you thought think that we should interview or talk with on this show, you can send an email directly to me, Cynthia at agile-world.news or Steve at agile-world.news. And we both are also on LinkedIn a lot. 
So if you, we too will answer you if you send us a message. Steve, okay. anything else? And if you want to collaborate on open space, I'm going to point you to April. And um, so, so when is this? This isn't in April. This is October, right? This is October? Yeah. October what? 8th and 9th. 8th and 9th. Uh, and, and it's going to be amazing. Everyone is welcome. All ideas are welcome. It will be a truly beautiful event. And I know, and I'm just honored to be here with so many beautiful and wonderful people. So thank you, everyone. October. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>